What up, everybody? It's Chris Rosco. This is Operation Mock Show. And today, I'm going to try and explain uh, shadow work a little bit better. So I've been working on how to explain this for a little while. <clears throat> and I've noticed that it works for some people and it works and it doesn't work for others. And um, I think it's in the way I explain it because I last week I asked y'all what some of your biggest problems or struggles in uh, actually doing shadow work were. And multiple people said an actual practical guide of how to do it. And I was thinking like, fuck, I thought I've given a practical guide on how to do it. But then I thought about what I might have been doing wrong to make it so that some people couldn't quite get it. And I realized that I think conceptually. And so the way I learn is I get presented with a concept and then I think about the concept and I try and figure out a way to work the concept and I, I try to make it my own. And I realize that that's not necessarily how everybody works. Some people need to actually be told how to do a thing rather than just told that a thing exists and then figure it out. Um, and so I wasn't, I wasn't covering that. And so I want to try and do that now. But I'm going to still do it in a fashion that actually works for me uh, by telling stories. And I'm going to go through, I'm going to try and uh, combine my learning style with a learning style that might work for, for other people. So I'm going to tell you two stories. Uh, to show you how to integrate two two different elements. But first, I'm going to break down the steps for you. So I even took notes on this. Look at me. Okay, so first step, identify the problem. The whole point of integrating your shadow in the first place is to <laughs> not have problems in your life or to have less problems in your life or to turn problems or challenges into sources of strength and inspiration and, and use them as raw materials to build a new life with and, and just to be happier and whole. So the first thing you want to do is acknowledge a problem. And specifically, you want to be acknowledging a consistent problem that seems to keep going even though you're trying to change it, right? So like a good example of this would be like maybe you want to work out three to five times a week, but you work out none times a week. That's because some part of your shadow is telling you to not do it because there's some threat, some perceived threat that like going out and working out three to five times a week is somehow a scary and threatening to, thing to do. Whereas sitting at home and judging yourself and feeling like shit because you didn't do it is somehow safer. That's, that's how the shadow more or less works. <clears throat> so you identify the problem. The problem is I want to be working out, <laughs> but I'm not. And then you identify the reason for the problem. And first of all, the reason is because, like I said, you're protecting yourself from something. So you got to figure out what it is exactly that you're protecting yourself from. You have to really be honest with yourself here. This is why I often say that shadow work is just a matter of honesty. It's, it's about shadow work is essentially just not bullshitting yourself. So if you can identify the reason that you're avoiding the thing, it's like, oh, if I'm afraid if I go to the gym that everyone who's already in shape will make fun of me. Or I'm afraid that if I start going to the gym that I won't keep it up and I'll be even more disappointed that I started and failed. Or if I go and work out, I still won't get any better and I'll just have to run up against this thing or blah, blah, blah. And there's all these potential things that seem really, really harsh. And so it, it occurs to us to, as safer to stay where we're at rather than go into the unknown and do the big scary thing. So... First, you identify the problem. The problem is I'm not going to the gym. Uh, the reason for the problem is because I'm afraid that if I go there, everyone will judge me, right? And so I first of all want to talk about the fact that this second part of identifying the thing is basically the crux of the whole practice. Because if you can get good at identifying what's really going on inside of you, then you're basically free. Like the ability to be straight with yourself and not bullshit yourself and be honest to God about what the fuck's going on. And I mean that honest to God, because I see, you know, like in the Bible, they talk about God is this all present, all knowing uh, judge of character. That's you. You always know whether you're full of shit or not. All the time, always. There's simply no escaping it. Even if you try and push it into the back of your mind, you know whether or not you're full of shit. And you will live accordingly, you will judge yourself accordingly, you will build your relationships accordingly. If somewhere inside your mind you know you're full of shit, it's, it's going to mess you up. And so you really, really, really have to be honest with yourself here. And so if you can do that alone, you pretty much nailed life because you can be honest about 
what you're afraid of. You can be honest about what you want. You can be honest about what your true intentions and motivations are. You can be honest about all the most important things in life. So this, this step alone is more or less life and personal mastery in a nutshell. It's the ability to be honest with yourself. So after you've identified the reason, then there's a two-sided solution to actually deal with the thing. The first side of the solution is to express the feelings. And these are both equally important. You want to express the feelings and then you want to integrate the wisdom. And I'll go into that second thing. So expressing the feelings is like, oh my God, I'm afraid if I go to the gym that all these super fit people will make fun of me and I won't fit in and I'll feel really crappy. The important thing to know here is that what you're afraid of is feeling crappy. You're not actually afraid of going to the gym or whatever it is and having all the beautiful people judge you. That's not really what it's about. It's about if you were to go to the gym and these people were to treat you that way, you would do certain things to yourself in your own mind that would be so awful that you'd rather just avoid the whole thing. And so the idea here is to fully understand that what you're not afraid of the situation. You're only afraid of your own emotions and what you'll do to yourself in those circumstances. So what you want to do is actually go ahead and express those emotions. Because the whole point of this is if you're not, if you're no longer afraid of the potential emotions that could arise in dealing with a thing, there's no point in being afraid of the thing. Like, like rejection. So let's say I want to go talk to this girl that I think is really hot. And I'm afraid that she's going to reject me. What I do is I go out and go, I look at myself and I say, okay, what's the feeling I'm afraid of happening? Like if she rejects me, what will I do to myself with that information? And then I think, okay, I'm, I'm stupid. Uh, I'm dumb. Uh, I'm not good enough. Uh, I'm not successful enough. Uh, I'm, I don't have enough money. Uh, I'll tell myself all these, all these things. Nobody loves me. Nobody wants me. I'll tell myself all these things. And so my practice is like, okay, let me just be okay with that. Let me express these emotions. Let me go towards them rather than away from them. Because the idea is, is if I go towards the feelings that rejection would cause, then I'm able to go towards rejection. And if I'm able to go towards rejection, that means I'm able to go towards the things that I want in the face of rejection. Because it's like if I'm not afraid of the emotions associated with the thing, then fucking what am I worried about? You, you run out of shit to be afraid of, right? So first of all, you want to be able to express the emotions and that could be different. Like I've had to deal with anger and I used to beat the shit out of my couch. I used to spin fire and I have these like metal stabs that used to light on that I used to light on fire and I used to beat the shit out of my couch with them. Um, I used to take Kung Fu uh, and do pushups until I cried. Um, and uh, I used to like just work as much of this anger as I possibly could out. Or if it's fear or something like that, you really just want to feel into it and, and let your body tell you what it needs to do. Like sometimes I'll curl up in a little ball on my bed and just like hold myself as I'm like panicking and freaking the fuck out because I'm tuning into something that's really deep in there. And so your body's really important in being able to actually express these emotions, you know, because you want to first tune into the thing and tuning into the thing is a secondary element of being able to identify what you're afraid of, right? So it's like, I'm afraid of judgment. How does judgment make me feel? I, as soon as I answer that question, I feel the feeling and I go, oh, fuck. And maybe I'll like crumple real quick. And it's important for me to actually go into the crumpled thing so I can act out and embody the experience that I'm having. And that allows me to process it out. Um, I don't fully know how to explain why that works. I'm, I'm sure it's the same principles as yoga. I, I don't have a complete understanding of the somatic link between or the link between the mind and the body. I don't know why that works, but when I allow my body to like contort into whatever feeling it needs to, to feel or punch things that are safe to punch or scream into a pillow or whatever it is I genuinely feel like doing, it moves, it moves the thing and I feel better. And, it's, and that especially works because what we're trying to do is get you to be honest. And if what's genuinely honest is you feel like curling up into a little ball, then curl up into a little fucking ball because that's honest. And that's, that's what's real. And of course, you don't want to live like that. You need to set up parameters where... Like I do this type of shit um, generally when I'm high as fuck before bed. <laughs> um, I'll do this for like 15, 20, 30 minutes before I go to bed. I also do it when I wake up, but I do it more intentionally so as not to kind of derail myself for the rest of the day. Um, so these are... 
these are tricky practices because um, you have to pace yourself and you have to kind of be able to take care of yourself. So I, I recommend going very, very slow in the beginning. And I don't think you'll have much of a choice anyway. Your mind is set up to defend you from ever looking at this shit. So you're going to have to go slow either way. So being able to actually express the feeling with your body is really important. And being able to express the feeling with your voice is really important. Because all that's going to do is that's going to get all the emotion out. You know, through your body, you're going to express it. And through your voice, you're going to express it. And then the amount of either fear or anger or whatever, as you express it, it's going to diminish and diminish and diminish. Next thing you know, all you have is the underlying reasons that you were afraid or angry in the first place. And that brings us to the next thing, which is integrating the wisdom. So once you've expressed enough of the top layer shit, you can understand what you were upset about in the first place. And that's always going to be at the bottom. So uh, you've processed the fear of going out into the gym, uh, or at least enough to where you can stand the idea of actually going. And then you think, okay, so what am I really afraid of? I'm afraid of other people judging me. And then you can dig a little bit more and you can say, why am I afraid of people judging me? What would happen if people judged me? And then you say, okay, well, they'd laugh and they'd point. And then after you've dealt with the emotions, you're like, well, that's not that big of a deal. So what happens if they laugh and point? And then here's a real funny thing is a lot of times with this is if people were to actually treat us as badly as we're afraid of being treated, we'd be able to laugh it off because those people are such ridiculous dickheads that it's hard to take them seriously. <clears throat> Like anytime anyone's ever actually being a serious jerk, you can just write them off fairly easy. So when you actually play out these things in your head and you're not afraid of the emotions associated with it because it doesn't smack up against your identity and make you feel like you actually are this thing, like a lot of the times if it's rejection or things like that, it just stops mattering at all. And you're able to say, well, okay. No, so, so here's actually a good one. Uh, you could end up running up on no one will love me. And if that's the case, then you probably just don't love yourself very well. And so, you know, okay, like how can I do this in a way where I'll feel loved, which is integrating the wisdom. If the bottom layer is no one will ever love me, and this will make me know that I'm unlovable, this will remind me that I already believe I'm unlovable. You say, okay, what can I actually do about that? What plan can I put in place? What strategy, what practices can I enact in order to make sure that I never have to feel, comp not never, but so that I know deep down that I'm loved. And so one of the things that I do is, um, since my top love language is physical touch, I just like do this. Like if, I, if I'm ever freaked out, like if I'm creating something that I'm afraid to create, like my coaching program, I think people are going to judge it. I think nobody's going to buy it. I think all these different things about it. And so I start to freak out and it messes with my productivity. You know, so I'll just stop because physical touch is really important to me. So I'll stop. I'll take a deep breath and I'll just hold myself and I'll be like, okay. Oh yeah. Even if everybody hates this, like I'm still loved. I never have to live without love. Okay, fuck. Okay, cool. I can go back to my life. And so you got to figure out what your thing is. And that's, that's what's integrating the wisdom is is after you express the shit, you find out the problem and then you dig a little bit deeper to find out what the ultimate problem was. And in this case, it's no one will love me. And you go, oh, well, that's not true because I'll always love me. Or what's another good example? Uh, another fear I have is, uh, is being homeless because I've been homeless in the past. I got kicked out of my house when I was 16. And so I lived out of my car when I graduated high school and <laughs> I had a tough relationship with money for most of my life. And so I'm afraid that if I fuck up and nobody buys my course, that I'll be homeless again. And so I think about that. I'm like, okay, so nobody buys my course. I run out of money. Uh, I have to leave my apartment in, in Los Angeles that I love. I'm like, okay, how bad is that really? And I'm like, I have a lot of friends that would, that would help me out if I really, really needed it. So it's, and then there's like government grants and stuff. And then there's all kinds of things that I can do to help me make sure that I at least stay on my feet. And I have friends that could potentially give me jobs and blah, 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 blah. And so you just start to make a plan for all this stuff so that your mind can actually know that you're paying attention and you care about the stuff that you're afraid of, right? Because if you were going to talk to a friend and your friend is like, yo, dude, uh, I'm really afraid that if I don't do this thing that I'll become homeless. And 
a good friend would hear that and be like, okay, yeah, I get that. That must be really hard to, to deal with. But at the same time, like you got to understand that that would never happen. Like you've got friends that would give you jobs. You've got friends that would let you borrow money. You've got family that would let you stay at their house if you absolutely had to. Uh, this worst case scenario that you're thinking about would potentially happen. You have ways of making sure that it wouldn't. And so when you can actually start to plan and integrate the wisdom, it really helps you calm down because you're like, oh, wow, I've, I'm a good enough friend to myself that I've listened to my concerns, I've addressed them and made plans for them wherever I need to. And like in my case, I don't want to have to borrow money. I don't want to have to leave my apartment. I don't want to have to do anything like that. So even though I know I could, that's like ultimate last resort. And I'd rather do a lot of other things in, in order to, rather than do that because I'm a very independent person and I like to do things my own way. So my solution to this is, well, I just need to work really fucking hard. I need to use that fear of being homeless as a catapult forward, you know, because it's like there's where you want to go. And then there's where you're afraid of going if you keep your eye off the ball. And both those help. Because it's like, fuck, I really don't want to go here. But I really do want to go here. And then that one propels you forward and this one propels you towards it. And it becomes this really cool symbiotic thing. So the idea is identify the problem. Identify the fact that you created this problem as a means to protect yourself. Then identify uh, why the problem exists. What it is exactly you're trying to protect yourself from. Express the feelings that you're trying to protect yourself from, whether it's fear, or anger, or whatever, and then see if you can find a healthier way to meet the need and take care of the thing that you're either afraid of or angry about or anything like that. So this has been 17 minutes, and I hope to God I explain this practically enough in order to actually be able to turn into like an actionable thing. Because my intent is to make my free content good enough to where... Uh, if you don't have any money, but you have a whole hell of a lot of hustle and you can't afford to join my programs, then the free content is enough. That's my goal is to where even if you can't afford shit, it's enough to change your life. Um, cause I am running a course, uh, at the beginning of the new year, I'm going to be teaching you how to set goals that are aligned with where you want to go. I'm going to help you connect to your why so that it fucking pushes you forward. And then I'm going to help you integrate all the shit that might get in your way so that you can sustainably move in the direction that most excites you in the way that you want to for the reasons that make sense to you in a way that's sustainable. That's what I want for you. And I have, I'm going to be talking about it more in the, in the coming future. Um, I'm going to be launching it in January, but as of right now, um, I want to make free content that'll help you do that, even if you can't afford the program. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do. So if there's anything that I left out, if there's anything that isn't clear, please let me know and I'll be happy to go over it again. So, and if you want to hear about the course, let me know, cause it's going to be fucking dope. I've been working on this for a long time and I finally feel ready to do it. So I love you. Let me know if you have any questions or anything like that. And I will talk to you later.